Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This question is about Norton's theorem, and uh, here we'll be discussing question E5.9 from Mr. Irwin's book. And for this, there has been a request from a student. So uh, let's uh, recall the background. We know that for any circuit, uh, to find the Norton's uh, equivalent, we do two things. First of all, we separate the load, and then we short circuit, and we calculate the short circuit current, which is also called Norton's current. So this is Norton current. The second thing we do is that we uh, don't short circuit, rather we look from here and find an equivalent resistor uh, for this, and that resistance is called Rn or R7. So this is the Norton's equivalent circuit, and then we connect the load back and calculate the load current or load voltage, whatever the question asks. Okay, so our question it is saying that find I0. I0 is this current that is current through the 6 kilo ohms resistor. That means this is our load. So keep in mind. And he also said that we have to find it using Norton's theorem. And the answer is also given. So let's first of all find the resistance Rn. And as we just discussed, we uh, remove this uh, load. This is our load, so we remove it and we look from here to find the equivalent circuit. For that, we have to short circuit all the voltage sources and open circuit the current source. That means all source must be made zero. So this short circuited, short circuited, short circuited, and this is open circuit. So this is our circuit, and now we are looking from here to find the resistance or equivalent resistance. Let's redraw it a little bit neatly. Just removing this, so now it looks like this. And we are still looking from here. So you can see this is one path, and this is another path. So this we can add, and so it will be 9 kilo and 6 kilo, and we can bring this path close to this, as shown here. So A, B, our I here, we have just moved this like this. 6 is there, 6 kilo, and then the other arm here, and this is 9 kilo, this one. And you can see these two are now in parallel, and the parallel is in series with 3 kilo to find R Thevenant or R Norton. So R Norton or R Thevenant is this 3 plus these two in parallel, which will be 3.6. So the answer is 6.6 .6 kilo ohm. So this is R Norton. We have calculated. Now we'll find the I Norton or I short circuit. Here also we remove the load and then short circuit this. We short circuited this. So this, the current through this, will be called the I short circuit current or I Norton current. Now there are several techniques of finding that you can use. One would be the mesh analysis method. And the other is the uh, uh, nodal method, nodal voltage method. So these are the two most uh, prominent methods of solving. And We'll discuss both of these, and rather, actually, in the mesh analysis, we'll be discussing two techniques, so you have a fairly good idea which is more comfortable uh, to do. So the first one, in the mesh analysis, there's another technique called no super mesh method, and this I learned from this gentleman. And what is that is, you know, if there is a current source between two mesh, then this becomes a super node, sorry, super mesh. And there is a technique of solving super mesh, but most students don't like this. So I have uh, given preference to the method given by this gentleman, first of all, and then we'll also solve it by the super mesh method. So what he's doing is, 
Yes, there are three currents, I1, I2, and I3, I1, I2, and I3. We need three equations to find their values, okay? So we all know that. And since there is a current source in between, we have to avoid any loop containing the current. This current source, we cannot use this loop. Because when we writing the loop equation or the volt KVA equation, we are writing voltages. But this is current, so we can't use this one. Similarly, we can't use this loop also. So what is left is outer loop, this one. So let's write that. From the outer loop, we go from here, minus 10, then 2. I1 will not write kilo. Uh, we assume that they are kilo, and the current, the result that comes will be in milli, obviously. So 2I1, then 3I1, then 4I2, minus this voltage 12, and plus 6I3. So this is the equation simplified, we get this equation number 2. So we have got one equation. The second equation, we can use this loop. This does not have the current. So, and KVL from here, this. So this is the equation for the third loop simplified. So we have got two equations. Now we need one more equation. And for that, we can use this relation from here, which is I1, I1 plus I2 is equal to I3. Sorry, I1 plus 2. I1 and plus 2 is equal to I2. Take care. Okay, now this, uh, there's no mistake. Actually, if we look at this point, I1 is entering, 2 milli is entering. So both entering I1 and 2, and I2 is leaving, so this is correct. So this is the third equation. And now we can solve these equations. From this equation, we find I3. And from here, we have found I2. So we'll put the values of I2 and I3 in equation number two, this one here. And solving, this was the equation, now we'll solve. And solving this equation, we can find I1 to be 0 0.788 milliampere. I1 we have found, and now we can find I2 and I3. This is the formula for I2, putting value of I1, so I2 is 2.788 milliampere. And similarly, this was the formula for I3, plugging in the value, I3 is 1.152 milliampere. So we have found all the three currents. Now the short circuit current is I3, minus I2. I short circuit is I3 minus I2 and plugging in both the values, I short circuit comes to be minus 1.634 milliampere. So we found the short circuit current and we have found the resistance. So this is our equivalent circuit, not an equivalent circuit. And now we'll replace the load that we had uh, separated. So we connect the load now, and now we can find this current I n. And we know by current division rule that we uh, can find easily the total current divided by total resistance multiplied by opposite arm. So by CDR, total current divided by total resistance multiplied by opposite arm. So this here, this is going to find I0. So this is the opposite arm, 6.6. .6. So the current is now 0 0.856 milliampere. So this is the answer given in the book. So those who do not want to proceed further, you can stop here and just uh, enjoy life. But uh, let's see the other two techniques as well, if you have patience. OK, now this, this method is actually the super mesh method we'll be solving now. And you know, in the super mesh, we remove the current first of all. So we remove the current, and then we write a mesh equation here, 
and we write a mesh equation here and we also write an equation at this point the current equation so by kvl left mesh from here 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 we get this equation simplifying similarly the current at this node here i1 entering 2 milliampere entering and i2 leaving so this is another equation and now for the third mesh kvl at this mesh and from here we find i3 just like we did in the previous case and putting the value of i1 and i2 uh, so uh, i uh, sorry this i2 and i3 in this equation these were the three equations that we got and putting the values solving we get i1 and similarly putting the value of i1 we get i2 and also i3 and then same thing isc is i3 minus i2 and the equivalent circuit as we did same thing same value okay so this is the super mesh technique and now the nodal method is uh, looks slightly difficult but those who love nodal they will uh, love to do it by this method so let's see that now this is short circuit this point we are calling v2 this is v1 this is v2 and since it is short circuit therefore this will also be v2 and now we draw all the currents we calling this current i1 this is i2 and this is uh, i3 or i4 or i'm sorry 2 milliampere this is 2 milliampere we call this current i3 this is i4 now what is the technique to find uh, uh, isc this one by kcl at node 2 is here the current entering is i3 plus leaving is 2 milliampere and leaving is i short circuit so if we can find i3 then we can find isc and to find i3 we'll solve both the nodes v1 at node 1 this is one current entering i1 2 milliampere entering i2 leaving now i hope you know how to write the node voltage equation but just to give an idea for i1 we are starting from here 0 minus v1 so 0 minus v1 now there, there is a source here and the direction of current from this source is same as our original direction this one and the current from this source will also go out therefore we will add this so it is plus 10 and divided by these two resistances which is 5 then 2 and i2 this is i2 this is v1 minus v2 divided by 4k but what about this voltage this is also adding the from the positive so look current is going out which has the same direction as i2 therefore this will be plus so plus 12 so this is node 1 equation simplifying equation number 1 we get similarly at node 2 now these both are node 2 so there are four currents here actually current i3 entering current i2 entering and 2 milliampere leaving and i4 leaving and similarly now we'll write the voltage equations so i3 is 0 minus v2 and this is also adding so plus 8 divided by 3 i2 this one we already did v1 minus v2 plus 12 divided by 4 then 2 and then i4 is v0 divided by 6 and solving we get the second equation now by both solving both equations we can find uh, the value of v1 and v2 so from here we get v1 put this in the second equation so v2 we get 6.9 now we don't need v1 we just need v2 to find isc because we 
this was the formula that we had uh, discussed that we to find isc we need i3 and to find i3 we only need v2 so i3 is this formula 0 minus v2 plus 8 divided by 3 2 and isc we know v2 now so this is the value calculated it will be minus 1.634 milliampere we have found ic isc and we'll use the resistance that we had found already and we'll connect the uh, load and calculate i naught as we did so this is i naught and i hope so you have been able to follow this please let me know which method you like thank you